Welcome to this examination of the brain's medial surface, viewed through a mid-sagittal section. This particular perspective is crucial to understanding the gross anatomy of the hemispheres, the diencephalon, the brainstem, and the ventricles. Our attention first focuses on the corpus callosum, neatly divided by the section, creating a pathway between the thalamus of each hemisphere through the third ventricle. This section also traverses the entire expanse of the brainstem. Prominently, we note the central sulcus of Rolando, not as deeply engraved as on the supralateral surface, but certainly visible on this medial aspect. Moving posteriorly, we find the cerebellum behind the brainstem and the fourth ventricle. This section cuts through the cerebellum's midline, the vermis, and offers a glimpse of the cerebellar tonsil. This mid-sagittal section traverses the third ventricle at the midline, revealing the intricacies of the diencephalon region. Here, the thalamic portion of the diencephalon is demarcated from the hypothalamic part by a groove known as the hypothalamic sulcus. This sulcus originates at the foramen of Monroe, or the interventricular foramen, and culminates at the aqueduct of the midbrain. Our view captures the optic chiasm at the anterior aspect of the hypothalamus, with the mammillary body positioned just posteriorly. We can also differentiate the tripartite structure of the brainstem, the midbrain, the pons with its anterior bulge, and the medulla. The midbrain hosts a narrow cerebrospinal fluid channel, the aqueduct of the midbrain. Located posteriorly to this aqueduct, within the midbrain itself, we find the superior and inferior colliculi, collectively known as the tectum. We delve deeper into the medial surface of the cerebrum, with the brainstem and cerebellum removed for clarity. Our primary focus here is the corpus callosum, a substantial bundle of white matter that bridges the two hemispheres. This large C-shaped commissure stretches across the brain's midline beneath the cerebral cortex, connecting the cerebral hemispheres and forming the most extensive part of the brain's white matter. The corpus callosum has distinguishable parts, the genu, rostrum, body or trunk, and splenium. Within each cerebral hemisphere lies a space brimming with cerebrospinal fluid, known as the lateral ventricle. We also observe the septum pellucidum, a membranous structure that separates the anterior portions of the lateral ventricles of one hemisphere from the other. This structure appears torn in our dissection, unveiling the lateral ventricle of one hemisphere behind it. Above the corpus callosum, we find the cingulate gyrus, a vital component of the limbic system. The fornix, another fiber tract of the limbic system, is located along the lower edge of the septum. The fornix, a C-shaped bundle of white matter, resides in the mesial aspect of the cerebral hemispheres, arching beneath the corpus callosum along its inferior border and then curving upwards beneath the splenium. The frontal lobe's medial surface is positioned anterior to the marginal sulcus. The parietal lobe is nestled between the marginal sulcus and the deep parieto-occipital sulcus. Now visible, the occipital lobe is divided primarily by the calcarin fissure with the primary visual area, or area 17, located along its banks. As we explore the sulci and gyri of the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere, we find the callosal sulcus along the margins of the corpus callosum. Above it, we have the cingulate gyrus, an arch-shaped convolution. Its frontal portion is known as the anterior cingulate gyrus, or cortex. The cingulate sulcus, a feature of the cingulate cortex, separates the frontal and parietal lobes from the cingulate gyrus and terminates as the marginal sulcus. 
it sends a branch, the paracentral sulcus, to separate the paracentral lobule from the frontal gyri. From anterior to posterior, we observe the anterior parolfactory sulcus, subcolossal area, posterior parolfactory sulcus, paraterminal gyrus, and finally the lamina terminalis and third ventricle. The paracentral lobule, a continuation of the precentral and postcentral diuri on the medial surface, serves as a higher center for micturition and defecation. Finally, we pinpoint the isthmus of cingulate gyrus, a narrow region located between the splenium of corpus callosum and calcarin sulcus.